This video is to give you a quick overview of how to navigate the TMS user interface and some of its key features. The user interface is divided into five key areas. First, at the bottom right of the screen, you will find your user ID and your company name and the time zone you work in. There is also a button to sign out of the system. Although closing your browser window will remove the application from your screen, it does not record the fact that you signed out of the application. Second, at the bottom left, you have three helpful buttons. A button that allows you to select your preferred language for the screens. Currently, only English is fully supported. However, if you change the language indicator, you will see that some of the screen is immediately translated into that language. Once multi-language is fully supported, all the screens will translate. Beside the language selector is a hotkey that will launch another instance of the application in a new browser tab. The new tab will be the exact same screen as the tab you were in. This is a very quick way to launch multiple copies of the TMS application. To the right of the auto launch button is a help button where you can find videos and documents to further explain the screen you are looking at. For example, if we are in the compliance submenu, you can launch a video on how to use the compliance subsystem. To the right of these three areas is the version numbers of the software you are using. The first is the client or user interface software version, which is what you see. The second is the application program interface or API version, which is the programming done behind the scenes. Third, at the top left is the home button. The home screen is where you will find critical system information and where you keep your preferred dashboards. Please see the preferred dashboards documentation on how to create and manage your preferred dashboards. Fourth, at the top right will be the main tabs of the working TMS application. If you mouse over the tabs, they will each explain what you will find within those particular subsystems. For example, mouse over the orders tab will explain that this is where you will find create, dispatch, and complete orders. If you do not have authority to these subsystems, the mouse over will tell you so. When you click on the tab, it will open up the main working area. The fifth and most complex area is the main area of the screen. This is where you will do most of your work within the TMS. When you click on a tab, a menu system will appear on the left that can expand and collapse to show submenu items. Common to the user interface is the use of grids, known as rows and columns, which will show a matrix of information much like your favorite spreadsheet application does. In this example, we are showing you the grid of customers for one of our test accounts. The grids come with some built-in functionality that make them dynamically configurable. For example, you can adjust the width of the columns just by dragging the edge of the grid column. You can also put your mouse over the edge of the grid column and double-click to adjust the column width to fit the largest piece of information. You can sort the grid by the data in a single column by just clicking on the column title. You can move the columns by simply clicking holding and dragging them around the grid. You can filter the grid to look at only a subset of data. The filter looks like a funnel in the grid title. The filtering options are varied and provide a very quick way to zero in on the data you're looking for. For example, I may want to look at all grid items where the customer name contains the string stone. If you filter the grid, the filter summary at the top right will list all your grid filters. To remove an individual filter selection, simply go back into the filter and click the clear button to remove all filters go to the top filter summary and click clear all filters often the grid will come with some filtering options at the top of the grid in this particular case there are many filters we can choose from once the filters are applied the bottom of the grid will identify how many total rows are in your selection allow you to navigate through the pages of selected data and let you choose how many rows to show per page most grids come with an actions button that will allow you to add or remove columns from the grid. This is a great way to customize the grid to exactly what you need to see. For example, we may want to add the customer's toll-free number. Just choose the toll-free number from the list and click save and it's now part of your grid. You can also increase or decrease your font size or export the data from the grid to an Excel spreadsheet so you can analyze the data with the power of Excel. The grid may also have specific function buttons, like in this case, add a new customer or copy selected record as in the trailer or user screens. Some grids will have template records that can copy your standard settings for the record 
you want to create. Template records can speed up the ability to add new records. The rows of the grid contain data. If the data contains an email address or web address, you can click on the address to open up an email message or website. Holding your mouse over grid data can display other information about the piece of data. For example, holding the mouse over our code shows if the customer is approved and whether we can bill them. Very important information will color code the cell. In this case, green means the customer has approved credit. Yellow means they are pending credit and red means they have been refused credit. If they are not a billing account, there will be no color. If you double click on the row, it will open up the data behind the screen, which will often be a profile or detail summary screen. The detail screen may also have its own menu system. For example, in a CRM profile, the contact information shows basic information about contacts for the CRM, while the settings, compliance, and alerts are other areas where users can customize how the system works for them. These areas are subjects of other training videos. While in edit mode, and if your user profile has sufficient authorities, you can edit portions of the data. If you modify data, like the name, you must click the green check mark to save the change. If there is an address involved, the system will attempt to show you the address on a map. The map utility we use has many of the features of internet-based mapping tools to zoom and layer. In many of these screens, there will be an Actions drop-down. From these, you can do various actions like deactivate a record. In some submenus, you may see a Settings option. This is where you can set switches that can affect how the program works. In some setting screens, there are so many settings that they are grouped and the groups are collapsed into their group summary. To see all the entries in a group, click on the title bar. This will show all the group details. If you mouse over a group item, it will show documentation about the option. If you click on the group item, it will show you all the different options you have and what they mean. The system is very self-documenting. In summary, the user interface is very flexible, user customizable, and easy to navigate.